Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let Let us us be still still in in the presence presence of of God. God. It is night after a long day. What What has has been been done has been been done. done. What What has has not been been done has not not been been done. done. Let Let it be. The night is dark. Let Let our fears fears of the the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your place enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. Now it is evening, lights of the city, bid us remember Christ is our light. Many are lonely who will be neighbor where there is caring. Christ is our light. Now it is evening, food on the table. Bid us remember Christ is our life. Christ is our peace, some are neglected, who will be neighbor, where there is caring, Christ is our peace. Thou is evening, here in our meeting, may we remember, Christ is our friend, some may be strangers, Let us pray. O God, our deliverance, you keep guard over your faithful people. As you watched over your servant Jacob, protect us from those who would seek to do us harm and bring justice to those who seek refuge in you, that we may praise and bless your name and live in righteousness before you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this evening is from Psalm 18, verses 6, 9 through 12, and 16 through 18. In my distress, I call upon the Lord. To my God, I cry for help. From From his his temple, temple, he heard my voice, and and my my cry to him reached his ears. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He He rode rode on a cherub cherub and and flew. He He came came swiftly upon upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering around him, his canopy thick clouds dark with water. Out Out of the the brightness brightness before him, him, there there broke broke through his clouds hailstones and coals of fire. He reached down from on high. He took me. He drew me out of mighty waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Genesis 28, verses 10 to 22. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to the heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. There is none other than the house of the God. And this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put on under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. But the name of the city was Luz after the first. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give one-tenth to you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Tonight we hear the story of Jacob the dreamer, who flees from his brother Esau after stealing his birthright. Sometimes we forget that part, that Jacob was no saint, but rather quite the schemer. He and his mother, Rebekah, went to a lot of trouble to trick Isaac into thinking that Jacob was Esau, so that through all of their dishonesty, Jacob could receive the honest and irrevocable blessing that Isaac intended for his oldest son. This part of the story is not in our reading for tonight, but their deception has significant and unintended consequences. When Esau finds out what his mother and brother had done, Rebekah sends Jacob to her brother Laban, in part to save his life, because Esau is so mad at Jacob that he wants to kill him. So as he sets out on his journey, Jacob is left to confront the reality of his actions, and he falls asleep in a makeshift bed with a stone for a pillow. In Learning to Walk in the Dark, Dr. Taylor examines what the Bible has to say about where we sleep and spend the darkest hours of each day. According to Psalm 4, verse 4, Beds are where you commune with your own heart. They are where you get humbled with pain, according to Job 33, verse 19. They are where you meditate in the night, according to Psalm 63, 6. And according to Psalm 6, our beds are the place we flood with tears. And as Song of Solomon makes clear throughout that entire book, A bed is where passion grows and where children are born. Put simply, a bed is where you face your nearness to 
and farness from God. To quote Dr. Taylor, whether you are in pain or not, whether you are anxious or not, even I think whether you are a religious person or not, a bed is where you come face to face with what really matters because it is too dark for most of your usual shadowing distractions to work. You can turn on the lights if you want, but they're all artificial. The most they can do is postpone your encounter with what really matters. They cannot save you from that reckoning forever. Jacob has such a reckoning with God in his dream. Notice how he receives the same promises as Abraham, land, descendants, and blessing. But in verse 15, God makes an additional promise. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you, God says. It's a promise that Jacob will cling to throughout his lifetime. From the moment that he steps foot into Laban's household and the trickster is himself tricked into marrying Leah first, to the day that he sees his brother again not quite sure what to expect, Jacob knows that God is with him. And I think that is what helps him continue on his journey away from and back to to the land and blessings that God had promised him. Now, if you think that journey was easy, go back and read through Genesis chapters 25 through 49. Jacob, the son who had to steal his brother's birthright because his father liked his brother more, plays favorites with his own wives and sons. And again, has dire consequences as a result. His flocks are blessed over and above his uncle Laban's, but he's so worried that it will all be taken from him by his brother that he's willing to give up his riches all to Esau in order to spare his own life. Later on, Jacob spends years thinking that his favorite son Joseph was dead before he discovers the truth that his other sons had wanted to kill him, but instead decided to sell him into slavery in Egypt. And his other sons never quite believed that Joseph had forgiven them for their actions all those years before. So God's blessing did not mean that Jacob would have a happy and easy life. Far from it. But God's presence certainly helped him through that emotional roller coaster that was his life. In 2004, psychotherapist Dr. Miriam Greenspan wrote a book called Healing Through the Dark Emotions. It reflected on her own experiences and the personal loss of her son when he was two months old. Like any parent such, struck down by such a loss, she woke up every morning in a sea of grief and went back to bed in it every night, doing her best just to keep her head above water in between. This went on for months during which time she could not help but notice how uncomfortable her own grief made those around her, especially when it didn't stop on the schedule that others expected. This led her to explore the idea that emotions such as grief, fear, and despair have gained a reputation as, quote, the dark emotions, not because they're noxious or abnormal, but because Western culture keeps them shuttered in the dark with other shameful things. Taylor, in referencing Dr. Greenspan's book, says, if you've ever spent time in the company of the dark emotions, you too have received subtle messages from friends and strangers alike that you were supposed to handle them and then move on sooner rather than later. Some of us have even gotten a message, she says, that if we cannot do this on schedule, we may not have enough faith in God. 
If we had enough faith, we would be able to banish the dark angels from our beds, replacing them with the light angels of belief, trust, and praise. Greenspan calls this spiritual bypassing, using religion to dodge the dark emotions instead of letting it lead us to embrace those dark angels as the best, most demanding spiritual teachers that we may ever know. I read that and I knew it to be true. Just like we do not learn as much from our successes as we do our failures, these so-called dark emotions have much to teach us. In a world that focuses on our personal happiness and having things the way we want, when we want, we have developed a low tolerance for sadness. Dr. Taylor writes, it is the inability to bear dark emotions that causes many of our most significant problems and not the emotions themselves. When we cannot tolerate the dark, we try all kinds of artificial lights, including but not limited to drugs, alcohol, shopping, and hours in front of the television or computer. There are no dark emotions, Greenspan says, just unskillful ways of coping with emotions that we do not know how to bear. The emotions themselves are conduits of pure energy that want something from us, to wake us up, to tell us something that we need to know, to break the ice around our hearts, to move us to action. The fear of leaving everything and everyone he knew behind must have terrified Jacob. The trickery of replacing Leah with Rachel must have angered him. Later in life, the pain of losing Joseph must have brought on deep grief. And yet, 20 years later, when Jacob returns to the land that God promises him, again in the midst of darkness, he wrestles with God. Instead of fleeing the unknown, instead of calling for a light, Jacob wrestles in the darkness and secures a blessing and name change from God. Later on in chapter four of Learning to Walk in the Dark, Dr. Par Dr. Taylor paraphrases Dr. Greenspan by comparing the dark and painful emotions to a Zen teacher who whacks students with a flat board right between their shoulder blades when he sees them going to sleep instead of meditating. If we can tolerate the whack, she says, better yet to let it wake us up, we may discover the power hidden in the heart of the pain. Though this teaching is central to several of the world's religions, it will never have broad appeal, since almost no one wants to go there. Who would want to stick around to wrestle in the dark with the angels all night when there was chance for escape? The only answer I can think of is this. Someone in need of deep blessing. Someone willing to limp forever for the blessing that follows the wound. This week, Pay attention to those dark emotions like grief, fear, and despair, be they in your past or even in your present. Reflect on what they are trying to teach you and trust that even they can be used by God to bring blessing. Amen.
To the cross I look And to the cross I cling Of its suffering I do drink Of its work I do sing On it my Savior both bruised and crushed showed that God is love and God is just at the cross you beckon me you draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words, so oh, lost in love. I'm sweetly broken, wholly surrendered. What a priceless gift Undeserved life Here I've been given Through Christ the crucified You called me out of death You called me into life was under your wrath and through the cross I'm reconciled and at the cross you beckon me draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words so oh, lost in love I'm Sweetly broken, wholly surrendered at the cross you beckon me, draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words, so lost in love. I How wondrous your redeeming love and how great is your faithfulness. At the cross you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words, I'm lost in love so. Sweetly broken, wholly surrendered at the cross, you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words, so lost in love, sweetly broken, wholly surrendered at the cross, you back in me draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words so oh, lost in love I'm sweetly broken wholly surrendered
Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Show us your mercy, O God. And and grant grant us us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again. And and sustain sustain us us with with your your bountiful spirit. spirit. Give peace in all the world. For For only only in you you can we we live live in safety. Keep the nations under your care. And and guide us in in the the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor Nor the the hope of of the the poor poor be taken away. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask that you forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hand we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who who art art in in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done. done on On earth earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God who brings forth new growth from a dark earth, a baby from a dark womb, and our Savior from a dark tomb be yours now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. now in peace, for Christ walks with you in the light and the darkness of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.